Archaeology is all about making what's old seem new again. By finding something old, they discover new information about the people and places of the distant past. It's a fascinating field of science, within which incredible discoveries are made almost every day. All of those discoveries come with stories, and we love telling those stories. That's what we're doing in this video, and we hope you enjoy it. We're starting off with quite a grim discovery. We've all heard of the Salem Witch Trials, which were a series of kangaroo court trials that took place in Salem in the late 17th century. Most of the trials resulted in the wrongful conviction and execution of women falsely accused of being witches by religious lunatics. Over 1,000 documents from this time still exist, serving as evidence that the trials happened. Those documents tell us that at least 19 women were hanged after being found guilty of witchcraft. In early 2017, archaeologists found the gallows. The unfortunate women met their end at a site atop a rocky outcrop called Proctor's Ledge. It had been proposed as the likely site of the hangings as long ago as 1921, but modern technology has been able to confirm the finding. That's despite the fact that there are no human remains at Proctor's Ledge. Although the women were buried here, it was a common practice for the families of the women to return to the site under cover of darkness and retrieve their remains so they could be reburied in family plots. When you were a child, you were probably allowed to draw with crayons long before you were allowed to draw with pens or pencils. There's no shame in that because it turns out that our ancient ancestors were using crayons as long as 10,000 years ago. This artifact, discovered on the banks of an ancient lake in North Yorkshire, England, has been identified by archaeologists as a red crayon. They think it's connected to a red ochre pebble that was found at the other end of the same lake. Color seems to have played a significant role in the lives of the region's prehistoric hunter-gatherers, and red ochre in particular appears to have been especially important. Nobody knows why this is, but the experts think that this crayon could have been used for anything and everything, from applying color to the inside of animal skulls to applying paint to the bones of the dead before burial. The use of red ochre isn't confined to British Stone Age sites. It's also been noted at other locations across Europe. This might have been down to the color being particularly easy to make, or it might have a more profound significance that we're not yet aware of. Every time a new kind of tool was invented, the ancient human race took another step forward. The axe was a hugely important invention, as it allowed our ancestors to change and shape the world around them. Archaeologists believe that the invention of the axe might have happened in Australia, because that's where the oldest axe in the world was discovered in 2016. The artifact, which is little more than a fragment of a larger tool, is approximately 49,000 years old. That makes it 14,000 years older than the second oldest known axe, which was found in Japan several years ago. The invention must have happened not long after the first human settlers arrived in Australia just 1,000 years earlier. Analysis of the fragments has revealed that the tool was made by grinding basalt against a softer rock and then adding a wooden handle. These ancient humans would then use the tool to chop down trees, remove bark from the felled trees, and then perhaps make spears. It seems that Australia's original inhabitants weren't quite the primitive savages they're often represented as. High-status families in Europe, and royals in particular, usually marry within their own social groups. This is a behavior that's gone on for hundreds of years, and yet might not always have been the norm. In July 2021, archaeologists completed a years-long study of a Bronze Age cemetery site in Hungary. The site contains several hundred burials from the country's ancient Vatya culture. Their standout find among the many graves and urns they examined was a 4,200-year-old solid gold hair ring inside an urn that contained the semi-cremated remains of a woman who had passed away while heavily pregnant with twins. Using a pioneering method of osteological sampling, Claudio Cabazzuti from the University of Bologna in Italy 
has analyzed the remains of the unborn children and concluded that the woman's partner was not from her social group and probably not from the local area either. This is an emerging field of science and hasn't yet been entirely accepted by other academics, but it provides an interesting context for a little understood period of Hungarian history. If the social elite of the time didn't breed with and marry each other, who did they breed with and why? The Hungarian discovery we just looked at challenges our preconceptions of ancient marriage and reproduction. Here's a find that might challenge our perceptions of ancient gender roles. Half a century ago, a significant weapon burial site was discovered in Suntaka Hatula, Finland. In 2021, the site and its contents were re-examined, leading to some surprising revelations. The Finnish site is well known for the discovery of a stunning bronze-handled sword in 1968, which subsequently led to the discovery of a 1,000-year-old grave packed with weapons. The grave's occupant was laid to rest wearing traditional female clothing for the era, but the presence of dozens of weapons, including two swords, indicated the presence of a male. To solve the debate about the individual's biological sex, the 2021 study obtained a DNA sample and tested it in laboratory conditions. To their amazement, they discovered that this person had Klinefelter syndrome and was born with the chromosomes XXY. The presence of the Y chromosome would have made them male, but the additional X chromosome would likely have created female features such as breasts and reduced muscle mass. From their clothing, it's apparent that this person identified as female. People who identify as a gender other than their birth sex still struggle for basic human rights today. And yet here's someone from 1,000 years ago who was afforded a full warrior's burial. The Vikings left their mark all over Europe in ancient times, and Ireland was no different. However, the mighty Scandinavian warrior race never made it to Burren County Clare. That begs the question of how this beautiful necklace got there. The artifact, which is undoubtedly Viking in design, is approximately 1,150 years old. It was found during an archaeological dig in Glencurran Cave, which is in Burren National Park. No Viking necklace like this has ever been found anywhere else in the country. Even the best preserved Viking burials in Dublin only feature basic bead necklaces. This one was clearly special and was likely a prized possession for its owner, so its presence here is unexplained. The majority of Viking necklaces in Ireland have fewer than 10 glass beads. This one has 71, some of which are wrapped in gold foil. The beads and decorations are thought to have symbolized the cultural and religious rank of a necklace's female owner, so this woman might even have been a Viking queen. The only possible explanation seems to be that the ancient residents of Burren obtained the necklace by trading with the Viking residents of nearby Limerick, but those Vikings must have become desperate to trade away something as precious as this. Archaeological discoveries are made during roadworks almost as often as they are during planned excavations. Roadworks often involve disturbing areas of land that haven't been touched in centuries, and you never know what might be hiding beneath them. In early 2016, a remarkable treasure trove of ancient Roman artifacts was unearthed by road workers in Chatterwick, North Yorkshire, England. The hall included a very rare Eastern European Roman brooch and a miniature sword that might have been a child's toy or a learning sword for a young warrior. More than 175,000 artifacts have been recovered from the site, with objects from the Iron Age and Stone Age to go with the Roman discoveries. The Cicada brooch was made in Pannonia. The former territory of Pannonia is today divided between Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Austria, and Hungary. Either the Roman-era residents of Caterick engaged in long-distance trading, or the town had a multinational population back then. The tiny iron-bladed sword, which is still inside its copper alloy scabbard, may have been a pocket knife if it wasn't a child's sword. Archaeologists think that the area was an important strategic route for the ancient Romans. The A1 motorway still runs through the area today, 
so not much has changed in 2,000 years. If we told you that archaeologists had discovered an ancient boomerang, you'd probably think we'd gone back to talking about ancient Australian inventions. That would be a good guess, but it would be wrong. Instead, this 2,000-year-old boomerang was found in the French town of Cotentin in 2014. While the wooden throwing sticks are generally associated with Australian Aborigines, they are unlikely to have been the first people in the world to come up with the idea. 2,000-year-old boomerangs have also been found in Egypt, but the oldest ever to be discovered was found in Poland and is around 30,000 years old. That makes this French one almost new by comparison. Rather than being treated as a toy, archaeologists think that it was used to hunt birds. A strong hunter would be able to throw the boomerang around 150 feet, more than enough to knock a bird out of the sky so long as you're a good shot. The boomerang was made a few decades before the Romans conquered Gaul, and suggests that the native culture might have been very different before they arrived. We've seen a few discoveries in this video that may or may not be toys, so it's good to come across one that definitely is. These children's toys, which are around 2,000 years old, were found inside tombs in the Kanakeo region of Turkey in 2017. They date back to the country's Hellenistic period and would have belonged to children who lived in or close to the seaport of Parian. Sadly, in each case, the toys were found buried with the children who owned them. It might even be the case that some of them were made specifically to be buried with the children as gifts for the dead or for their entertainment in the afterlife. What's especially fascinating is that the toys in the graves of boys are different to the toys in the graves of girls, suggesting gender role division existed even back then. Girls played with human figurines like dolls, whereas boys were more likely to have toy wagons. Given that the objects would have had no practical purpose other than to be played with, the level of detail on some of them is remarkable. Some artifacts seem too good to be true, either because of their excellent state of preservation or because of what they seem to tell us about the ancient world. They're dismissed as hoaxes by people who don't want to believe in their authenticity. That was the case with the Malinaltepec mask of Teotihuacan for a very long time. It wasn't until Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History performed a long and detailed scientific study in 2010 that it was conclusively proven to be a genuine historic relic. It's easy to see why some didn't think it could be real. It's far too complex and ornate. The 1800-year-old mask, which was first discovered in 1921, is made out of just under 800 intersecting tesserae. It looked brand new when it was found, and so that's precisely what it was accused of being. While the study proved its authenticity, it also created a new mystery. The mask was made during the Mayan Classic period between the 2nd and 3rd centuries, but seems to have been reused for a funeral during the post-classic period 700 years later. It would already have been considered ancient by then. For the second use, several layers of Amazonite were added to the mask. Why it was reused and where it had been for the seven centuries between uses is unknown. We hope you liked that mask discovery, because we've got another one for you! In 2016, archaeologists found a 2,000-year-old burial chamber in the ancient city of Trole, Turkey. Today, the city is known as Aden. Inside the burial chamber, they found a perfectly preserved baked clay mask. Rather than being a representation of the deceased or a death mask, Experts believe that the mask is a reference to the entombed person's interests and personality. More specifically, they think it's a theatrical mask. This person may have been an avid theater-goer, or maybe a performer. The fact that no masks like this have ever been found in the many other Hellenistic-era tombs of Aden might even mean that they were one of the most celebrated actors of their era. That would explain why they were given a ceremonial burial with lavish grave goods, despite not appearing to have any royal or ruling elite connections. Excavation work at the site has been extended into the 2020s, 
as archaeologists feel that there's evidence of human occupation dating back more than 7,000 years and much more to be found. The capabilities of the ancient Sumerians are a constant topic for debate among archaeologists and historians. Everyone agrees that they were far ahead of their time. But just how far ahead of their time were they? For example, is it possible that they built ships and sailed across the oceans to Peru? That seems to be what's implied by the inscriptions on the Pocotilla monolith. Calling the artifact a monolith feels ridiculous because it's so small. But there's nothing small about the significance of what's etched into its surface. There are symbols carved into every face of the object, and many historians and archaeologists believe that the symbols are Proto-Sumerian. When translated into English, they tell us that the Pataki Oracle is the one true source of truth and that its message should be heard by every corner of the world. If we accept that the inscription was made by Sumerians, the message could be interpreted as the Sumerians claiming to have both an oracle and a universal message for humanity. Traveling to Peru might have been an attempt to spread it. All of this sounds too sensational to be true, but then again, how else do we explain the presence of Sumerian symbols on an ancient Peruvian artifact? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.